Chris Bukowski for the American Battlefield Trust, and I'm standing on the Spotsylvania Courthouse Battlefield. Although this is one of the bloodiest battles of the entire Civil War, this is one of the least studied parts of the battlefield. Most of the attention focuses on the northwest corner of the battlefield as Ulysses S. Grant, marching down out of the wilderness on May 8th, gets bottlenecked by Robert E. Lee along the Brock Road. And Grant spills across the fields in an attempt to outflank Lee, who extends his lines along the ridge line, eventually creating a large bulge known as the Mule Shoe that Grant will attack on May 12th. And attention tends to focus there because of the intensity of the fighting on May 12th at an area known as the Bloody Angle. But here on the eastern front of the battlefield, Grant actually obtains a huge operational advantage because Ambrose Burnside is able to cut off this road and allow Grant to shorten his supply line. Grant's been getting his supplies from Culpeper, which is some 30 miles off in that direction. When Burnside takes this road, Grant can then shift his supply base to Fredericksburg, which is only 10 miles behind the camera up toward Fredericksburg. So it's a huge, huge operational boom. The property I'm standing on right now, right next to modern day Route 208 Courthouse Road. It was Fredericksburg Road at the time. It was a plantation owned by 37 year old Francis Beverly, who owned a little house across the street called Wig Hill. His brother James owned a little house back there called Dixie. It's gonna actually be right on the federal line. It'll be destroyed, although the foundation exists and the modern house sits on that historic foundation. The action that begins here actually starts on the 8th as Grant comes down from the wilderness. He's going to send James Wilson's cavalry division in through the back door to try to get to Spotsylvania Courthouse. The village itself is just about a mile down in that direction. There'll be four regiments of Confederate cavalry here under William Wickham that'll try to resist. Wilson sweeps him away, gets into the courthouse, and then Lee will counter with some infantry that'll drive Wilson back across this ground behind me and down uh, across the Nye River, which is uh, just a few hundred yards behind the camera. So then, Federal infantry is going to get into the picture here on the 9th of May. Ambrose Burnside's 9th Corps can't get to the battlefield because of that bottleneck that Ulysses S. Grant and uh, Robert E. Lee are facing along the Brock Road. So. Burnside's gonna march to the east through the old Chancellorsville battlefield. He's gonna then come down Fredericksburg Road in this direction. And on this ground, right around me, there's gonna be intense fighting on the late morning of May 9th. Confederate infantry has shifted into position here, so it's not just a few cavalry regiments to brush away. And so the back and forth fighting here is gonna create a bottleneck of its own that's gonna have problems for Burnside. But the sheer weight of his numbers is gonna then finally uh, prevail and he's gonna drive Confederates across this ground behind me and back toward the village. And then uh, Burnside's gonna hunker down right here on this ridge that I'm standing on and try to fortify to protect the road and that operational advantage that I mentioned that he gained. Burnside's gonna have a fair amount of success here at Spotsylvania Courthouse. Tends to get forgotten about. On the 10th of May, in conjunction with attacks by Emory Upton, he's gonna then attack up the road, almost get into the courthouse itself, and Grant's gonna pull him back, fearing that uh, Burnside's too exposed. And then Grant will say, oh, wait, wait, don't give up that ground, you gave up. And Burnside will dig in. And so he'll have works that are off in those woods behind me there, and that frees up some space for the Union Fifth Corps to shift over to this section of the battlefield and extend off into that direction as Grant looks for ways to get around Lee starting on the 13th of May. So two corps of the Union Army is gonna occupy this ground right here over the course of the two week battle. Now this is just one property of three that the American Battlefield Trust is trying to preserve associated with the summer of 64 campaigns. Not only do we have this property here at Spotsylvania Courthouse, but there's also a property at Newmarket associated with the uh, May 15th battle there. As Grant sent uh, forces down the Shenandoah Valley, they're intercepted by John Breckenridge uh, and his Confederates. There's a little sliver of land between I-81 and the Old Valley Turnpike, Route 11. You can help fill in that puzzle piece, a really important piece of ground under threat that you can help save. There's also action that's associated with the Battle of Trevilian Station on June 11th and 12th, the largest all-cavalry battle of the Civil War. 
American Battlefield Trust has decades of experience preserving land down there. And we have another opportunity to help save almost 100 acres there. So between these three properties, we've got nearly 125 acres of the summer of 64 that you can help preserve, but it can only happen if you can help us. We've got to raise more than $350,000 just for this. Thanks to some grants and matching gifts, we have the opportunity to magnify the strength of your donation to make it even more powerful. So as we continue to preserve the story of the summer of 64, your dollars can go even further. The Overland Campaign continues today thanks to your help. I'm Chris Mikowski for the American Battlefield Trust. Thanks for all you do to support battlefield preservation.